In this video, we're going to look at how to configure SSL decryption using the Cisco FTD and the Local Manager Firepower Device Manager or FDM. The process can also be done using the Firepower Management Center or the FMC, however the process is slightly different. In this lab, we're using the virtual FTD and we are using version 6.6.3. So with the uh, base setup configured for your FTD, what you want to do is access Firepower Device Manager and head over to Policies. Make sure your Access Control Rule Policies are in place to permit traffic to the relevant destinations. Also, take into consideration NAT if NAT is used within your environment. Our main focus here though is the SSL decryption and the access control rules play a part in that in terms of the traffic that's permitted. So now we want to click on SSL decryption. Now when you first access the SSL decryption policy it won't be enabled so you do need to enable that and it does give you a little bit of a breakdown of how SSL decryption uh, works for traffic that's going um, out of your network and traffic that's coming into your network to your servers. It's always worth looking at the Cisco documentation online just to make sure you have a full understanding of how SSL decryption works and the implications behind it. So you can have a quick look at these uh, different two options uh, and that's basically our SSL decryption um, on these devices uh, function. So decrypt known key or decrypt and resign. We will be using decrypt and resign for this demonstration. So we just click enable SSL decryption. And you can see there that that will enable the SSL decryption. I've already got one rule configured and in the settings we can select the certificates that are required for decrypting and re-signing and also for decrypting uh, known keys. For certificates if we head over to objects and then certificates you can add internal CA, add internal certificate or add a trusted CA certificate. In here, you do have some that's already configured with the device as well. And in this demonstration, we're just going to be using one rule. So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be decrypting the traffic from our internal zone going out to towards the in internet. And our our action for the decryption is to decrypt and re-sign as you can see here. So what this is going to do is it's going to re-sign uh, the, the floor with the um, key or the certificate rather that we have selected um, for SSL decryption. So we can verify that if we click on the settings and we can see that we use an internal CA to um, resign. If we were decrypting or wanted to decrypt traffic that was coming into our network, then we would have to look at decrypt using known keys. So basically, we would need to ensure that whatever server we wanted uh, to um, inspect the floor from, we would need to make sure that those keys are. Uh, configured on the FTD. There's also two other options, do not decrypt and we've also got block. Do not decrypt will simply, as it says, not decrypt a floor and then block will simply block the floor in a rule. So we're going to stick with this one rule and then what we're going to do is we're going to deploy that. So head over to the deployment tab, deploy now, 
and then the deployment jobs being added and we can monitor the progress under the task list. And you can see there that uh, we've just triggered that deployment process. So depending on resources, um, this can usually take anywhere from 5 to 12 minutes. Um, so do bear that in mind. We'll just wait for this to finish deploying and then we can verify by uh, looking at some logs and looking at the um, SSL decryption summary to ensure that traffic is indeed being decrypted. What we can also do as well to um, verify that traffic is being uh, decrypted is we can use Snort IDS to uh, validate that we can see content within a packet that would normally be uh, encrypted. So anything such as HTTP traffic, uh, HTTPS traffic rather. Now what I do have set up is while we wait for that deployment is snort already. So we can actually test this. And what I have is within my local rules, I've just got a rule here to search for um, within the snort rule. Uh, we're going to search for content and we're going to look for youtube.com. It's not going to be case sensitive. And then our message will be YouTube alert. I've also got a threshold in there that's going to uh, only count to within a duration of 60 seconds. So we'll test on that rule and we can actually test this now by quickly running snort. And if we try to access try to access YouTube if we just refresh this we shouldn't get any hits come through and as you can see we're not getting anything here and that's because the the the, the content it, it won't be able to find the content at youtube.com uh, so we'll wait until the change has been deployed on the FTD and then we'll try the same again and you should see that we start getting hits uh, on the snort IDS. So now the task has been deployed. What we can do is we can actually test looking at snort to see whether we can see what would be encrypted traffic usually in terms of the, the content within a packet. And we can also then look at the logs within the Firepower Device Manager to see and confirm that we are getting um, decryption for the rule that we've created. So, as you can see here, we have um, Snort IDS running on my Kali Linux virtual host, and. The snort process is running in a minute, but we don't have any uh, hits. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to minimize that moment. And then what we'll do is we'll refresh YouTube. We'll get this back up. And as you can see, we've already got hits starting to come through here again. We just do it again and I refresh that again now you can see we've got another hit that's come through and then one more time I refresh that you can see we've got another hit come through and YouTube has a range of IP addresses but what we can see is that we can see the destination part is uh, four four three. So we are getting, uh, we are able to uh, analyze the content of those packets, which would then assume that 
the decryption is also working so we can actually verify that so if we go back to the uh, firepower device manager and we go to monitoring and then we go down to SSL decryption we can see so we can actually change this over the last hour so we can see that we're getting um, decrypt and resign here so 50 percent we've got no blocks because we've got no rules uh, to block and we've also got no decrypt non key because we're not decrypting anything coming into any of the servers in this environment um, and then we've got some that uh, are not to be uh, decrypted as well um, so we can see we can see that which is good we can also look at the uh, events there we go so we've got another YouTube one here so we can see the URL uh, that's being decrypted and we can see that the SSL status is, show, is showing decrypt and resign and then we've got the, the policy that's being used as well and then the the actual name of the rule and then the action that's being taken on on the rule as well it gives us the uh, web application which is indeed uh, YouTube and we can see that we used our web browser to access that because we can also verify this IP address in the in the snort IDS so let's just have a look I'll do I'll just keep that small and I'll drag this over So we can see the the, the bottom one. So the yeah, so 142, 250, 187. Um, oh, it's actually this one. 142, 150, 178.14. So it's actually this one. But we can see that we've got the hit there as well, which is give us the alert. So that's essentially how you, in brief, can configure. SSL decryption on the Cisco FTD or Cisco Secure Firewall, which is now referred to using the decrypt and resign. A few points to note is that when you are using uh, an internal or self signed certificate whatever certificate you're using in fact you need to make sure that uh, any of those uh, subnets or any of the hosts behind the subnets that are going to be subject to SSL decryption um, do actually have um, the certificate also configured on their system if not then you will encounter um, server identity issues and connection problems So again, this is how you configure SSL decryption in brief for um, flaws out towards the internet um, or traffic that you uh, resign rather. It is very uh, brief. I hope that's been useful. Um, I will be doing more videos related to Snort, more articles related to Snort and also more articles related to the SSL decryption process in more detail to cover um, the different flaws that we can have and the different actions we can have on the flaws. So decrypt known key, do not decrypt and block. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.